says that we're complete in him. Why? Because God is looking at the complete package through what Christ has done because we are a new person. Now what we're striving to do is to line our life up with that position that has been given us. We've been, we've been given the position of holiness, but now I've got to line my life up with that. I have to live a lifestyle that, that shows that I am holy. If, I'll give you an example. If you were uh, a regular employee on a job, and you get a promotion to supervisor, that supervisor position demands different yeah. actions. See, the way you carry yourself as an employee, as a supervisor, you can't carry yourself like that. You got to now, even though you still got the employee mentality, you now got to line up with the supervisor mentality. That's right. You understand? So even though we have some, uh, because when we first came to Christ, if you were a cursor, one that used profanity, you were still able to use profanity. But you had to, you had to start changing your thinking so that your action will line up with the position that God has given us. Let me show you. Turn to uh, Ephesians chapter five. I like this really from the Amplified Bible. This particular verse. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to look at verse 8 of the end of this. Yeah, yeah. Verse 8. If you have it, I have it. It says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Live as children of the truth. Right. You used to be children of darkness. Right. Now you are children of the light. The Amplified Bible says that we're to live as though we were native born into the light. I like that. You know what that means? We're to live as though we weren't even never in darkness. Right. This is how I like So this is how God look, look at you and I now. He don't see us being ever in darkness. He see us in the light. And this is how we have to line ourselves up. Well, how do we do that? Romans 12 and 2, Paul told us. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ephesians 4, 22 says the same thing. He says that we're to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. And I like where they station Ephesians 4, I mean, about turning this into a new man. They put renewing the mind between transforming from the old man to the new man. Turn there, let me show you what I'm talking about. Turn back to you. Uh, we didn't, you go to chapter 4. Wow, thank you. What are you Let's look at verse 22. Ephesians 4, 22, look at this, it says that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, he's talking to Christians here now, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust. And then he says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Why verse 24? And that you put on the new man, which is created according to God, in true righteousness and what? Holiness. Now what did he put in between verses 22 and 23? Number 24, renewing the mind. He put verse 23, he said, you got to renew the mind. Well, see, that's how you, that's how you act naturally make that trans transformation. And what that spirit of the mind is, re is referring to, it, it gets into, the, if you step out, it gets into the, to your consciousness, to, to that subconscious area. Right. And see, a lot of times, we're renewing the surface, but you got some, you got some strongholds that got to be pulled down back in your subconscious. And the word of God is what does that. And he says that when to, 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 to outwardly transform the way that I am inside, I have to renew my mind. That's right. You can't experience the things of God with an unrenewed mind. Because your unrenewed mind, when it talks about the flesh, it says the flesh is enmity against God and all that. It's not talking about the skin. It's talking about a way of thinking. That, that way of thinking is contrary to the Word of God. See, we, see, we develop a way of thinking in the world, all right? And that way of thinking is contrary to the way God does it. Because, like, give an example. In the world, when somebody did something to you, I'm willing to believe that if they came to you for help, you wouldn't help them. See, in the world, it says, in the world, we don't, we don't feed our enemies. In the world, we don't, most people don't even forgive them. Forgive people. You understand? But God said, now that we're in God, He said, you have to forgive you. That's right. 
in a minute, and he not, and then he took it a step further. He said, not only do we have to forgive them, but we also have to feed them at their home. Right. Now, I have an analytical mind, and, and I go to think, and I say, well, if I'm feeding my enemy, I'm empowering him to hurt me. Because the enemy don't just dislike you, but the enemy won't hurt you. And God is telling me I got to strengthen him? Yeah. See, it doesn't make sense, but it does make faith. Right? God's word makes faith. And see, that's what faith can be. I have to believe him, so I have to change my way of thinking. I have to, and I do that by renewing my mind with the word of God. Amen. So that I can be on the same path with him. See, we have the mind of Christ, and our spirit will have the mind of Christ, and the, and the word will have the mind of Christ, but we got to get it in here. Yes. So this controls this. Right. Even though we should be in line, our spirit man should be in control, it's not. Until you start developing your mind, changing the way you see, and getting your mind in line with your spirit. Your spirit is, see, God is speaking to your spirit and telling you what to do, but your mind is saying, hmm, they, you don't know what they did to me. Forgive them. I can't wait to see them so I can give them a piece of my mind. <laughs> but see, the spirit, your spirit man is saying, forgive them, forgive them. But your mind is dominating that. Your mind is saying, oh no. Oh no, they think I'm weak. I'm all man. You know, but it takes a bigger man right. to walk away from it. Right. 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 You know what? A fool can fight. Right. Seriously, mm -hmm. if you get a dog that's real scary, you tell the dog it's scary because the tail is always between his legs. Put that dog in a corner. Mm. He he ain't gonna just jump on you, but he gonna bite you enough when you get away. You understand? So it takes a bigger person to surrender to God's way of doing it than it does just to act like a fool. Amen? Amen. So, if Jesus is the truly Lord of our lives, then we're doing what he's saying. And the way that we get to that position is by renewing our mind to the word of God. Amen? Amen. Now, one more scripture. Turn with me to uh, Colossians. Is it Colossians? Let me go. Yeah, it is Colossians. Chapter 2, I think. Colossians are y'all getting anything out of this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're talking about identifying proper fruits of faith. The first proper fruit that we talked about was you have to say what God's word is saying. If, you are, if you're in faith and your words are lined up with God's word. A second one that we identified was you have to act on the word. A third one that we identified was you have to walk in love. If you're doing those three things, see, you examine yourself in every circumstance and see if those things are manifested in your life. And the last one that we're talking about here is Jesus, the Lord of your life. Some Christians, he saved you, but he's not Lord. What did I say? Colossians, right? Mm -hmm. Chapter 2. Now, the way that we live a life of Jesus being our Lord is the same, it's, it's, it's under the same principle that we receive him. How do we receive Christ? By faith. So we're to live a lifestyle of faith, trusting him, a lifestyle of trusting in him. All right? Amen. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, Paul told us that. He says, As you therefore have received Christ, I'm in chapter 2, verse 6, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. That word walk means to live. So I receive him by faith, so I'm to live in him by faith. I'm to, see, I'm to trust, I am to trust Christ even if it doesn't make sense to me, even if I can't see the answer, even if everything around me is saying no, I have to trust him. Amen. All right? Verse 7 says, rooted, built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Now, the word the faith there is not just limited to faith for salvation of faith trust in God is also referring to the gospel, the uh, Christian doctrine, or we can break it down to the